Hello everyone and welcome to MBA 590 Digital Marketing and today we're going to be talking about content marketing. So what is content marketing? Well content marketing is understand how the, all the content of your brand uh, is created, who it is intended for, and what the purpose of the content is, right? The idea behind content marketing is essentially that you're, attra you're creating such good content that you're attracting the consumers to the content, right? So as opposed to like a traditional advertising based strategy where you're trying to interrupt the customer's daily life to place the advertising in front of them, here you're trying to create content such that it actually pulls the uh, consumers directly to you, right? Why is content marketing a powerful tool? Well, if you think about it, right, if you can create such an engaging set of content, then you have people who are constantly engaging with uh, your brand. And so as a result of that, uh, they you never really have to worry about quote unquote traditional advertising, right? They're constantly, they're constantly uh, understanding your brand. Uh, and you wanna create, and in fact, part of this is creating content that is so good that people wanna share it, right? So that's the best case scenario, is that in fact, that not only do they come back to your brand site on a while, every uh, on a repeated basis, but they then take that content, take the link, take the URL, and send it out to all their friends as well, right? So the goal of content marketing is to try to develop content that matches your customers' needs at whatever stage they are in the customer journey, right? Um, the focus as a result of that is not on, as I said, interrupting the customer, but rather engaging with the customer. One way to think of this is that marketers shouldn't think like um, advertisers anymore, but they instead should think like publishers, right? So if you think about a magazine publisher, right? The magazine publisher's goal isn't to create the most distracting, interrupting piece of content uh, that uh, annoys the person who has the magazine in front of them. The point is to create content that draws the, the reader in, right? And then the advertising is there beside it, right? Much like you might have the ability to take action on whatever piece of content you're writing right beside it. So your goal now is to attract an audience, not necessarily sell a product, with the idea that selling the product is a byproduct, if you excuse the pun, of, of actually uh, engaging with the audience. So there are traditionally thought of as four major components to content marketing, and they can be broken down into uh, two, two areas, right? There's the content itself, and the content is made up of both substance and structure, right? The content is who are you trying to reach and why, uh, and that's the substance of the content. And the structure is how is that content actually going to be delivered and organized, right? Are you going to put it out on YouTube? Are you going to put it on your own website? Are you going to put it uh, on Twitter every day, right? Um, and then there's the people components as well, right? And so unlike traditional advertising, a lot of traditional advertising can be created by just the marketing department, right? Like they can kind of look at what, they, what the product is, kind of come up with a, a snazzy ad and put it together. A lot of times in the case of content marketing, you need to in involve engineering, you need to involve uh, maybe some of the uh, customer behavior analysts, right? You need to involve uh, the finance people potentially to talk about the benefits of using the, thing, the, the product or service, right? And so as a result of that, it's a lot bigger of a people project than a traditional uh, marketing strategy is. Uh, as a result of that, you need to come up with a workflow, right? To, uh, to talk about how your content is going to be created, who's going to check off on it, and governance. You need to have politics, guidelines, and standards to discuss how that content will be displayed. The last thing you want is create this like fantastic piece. It's like an insider's look at a product development, and then find out that you know some of the material, some of the um, information is inaccurate or incorrect, right? So it's really important to have that governance uh, component in place. Now you can break down content marketing into kind of six steps, right? You have the, the idea that you need to listen to the consumers and create a buyer's persona, which we'll talk about. You need to decide on the theme and topics that really target that persona. You need to create content that support that theme and topics. You then need to promote that content. So you might do things like, you know, put out tweets about a blog post or put a Facebook link to your YouTube video, right? Uh, you need to measure and evaluate how well that piece of content did. And then you could potentially repurpose that content and uh, for another use and then re re repeat the cycle, right? Starting to create a new piece of content in the end. Uh, sometimes you actually repurpose the same content for a different persona. That's not easy to do, but we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to personas. 
So when developing this content, right, one thing you should probably think about is what is your brand essence? And the brand essence is an interesting concept. It's one sentence that describes the unique attributes of the brand and its emotional connection to the consumers, right? Uh, understanding that brand essence can help define the tone of the brand, right? How the content is going to talk to the individuals and the style that you should use to engage with the customers. In fact, it may help you determine what platforms to use, right? Um, certain platforms are more amenable to, say, a, uh, a, a fun, spirited type of approach, and some of them are more appropriate for serious approaches. We've all can think about uh, LinkedIn content, for instance, is very serious, very dramatic. As as opposed to something like maybe uh, a, a humorous video that you put on YouTube, right? Uh, and so often understanding the brand essence helps you understand how you're going to create the content. Now the brand essence can also be a useful guide for ensuring that what the content that you're creating actually matches up with uh, what you want to represent about the brand. And you can think about it about the, the, that it's answering the question, what is your reason for being and how do you connect that with the interest of your customers? So I'm going to throw this slide up here. This is a slide of a bunch of different brands. Uh, and I encourage you to take a second. Uh, I'm going to stop the video after this and kind of look through these brands and try and figure out what is the brand essence of some of these brands and what would be an interesting piece of content that you could create to support that brand essence. So we'll stop there.